Newcastle United have just beaten Spurs in London for a statement victory that puts us fourth top on 21 points. We're only being beaten once uh, this season so far, and that was a 98th minute uh, winner for Liverpool earlier on. Uh, I think we've had five clean sheets. We've got one of the meanest defences in the Premier League. Uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. So the top six, um, Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, Man U, Arsenal, Spurs, one of you, you can fight it out amongst yourselves, but one of you is moving aside because Newcastle United are coming through. I don't know if it's going to be this season. I don't know if it's going to be next season. But the premise of this particular video is to ask the question, is is this um, the type of football where successful football we're playing now sustainable for the rest of the season? Uh, or are we overachieving? To help answer those questions, I've brought along Rob, who has his own YouTube channel, Rubenstein, really knowledgeable guy, and we're going to have a chat about it. It's coming up. Rob, thanks for joining me on Tyneside Life. Really good to see you. No, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having us on, Eddie. We've just done a little video for my channel as well, which was fab, so thanks for coming on to mine. Um, but yeah, Newcastle are doing very good at the moment. <laughs> um, a great win for us uh, at the weekend, and, you know, hopefully we can keep it up. And of course, uh, Rob, um, I mean, we've beaten some, uh, oh, we've played really well against some of the big guns this season. Um, we drew against Man U, Man City, of course. We've beat Spurs away now only being beaten by Liverpool in that 98th minute winner. So it's not as if we're playing lower league teams here. We're really holding our own. Uh, we really are taking the game to these bigger clubs. Were you expecting that? Uh, I always expected us to give it a go in every game we're playing. Uh, I mean, a good example of that is when we actually lost 5-1 against Spurs down there last season because that was Eddie Howe going out there and playing the football that Eddie Howe wants to play. Um, he does take every game as it comes and you can tell we make slight tweaks of what we think will work that game. But overall, um, you know, I think one of, for, the for the statistics, you know, one of the highest turnovers in the final third and one of the highest turnovers to shot conversion in the final third. And that's exactly what Eddie Howe wants to do. Um, and you can you can see you know, some of these games, I mean, you know, going down to Old Trafford and, and getting a really good point, you know, had you offered me the point beforehand, you know, I would have taken it and it was a good point, you know, beat Everton, going down to the Spurs stadium and had you offered me a draw again, you know, same with Man City, I would have, I would have taken it, but you know, we went down there, we did one better, uh, we, we showed up, we played our game uh, and we deserved it. I would have went one stage further. I think if uh, if Newcastle had just made a good account of themselves and got beat, I would have been happy with that. Yes, yeah. So to, to win, I'm absolutely um, over the moon. But um, is this um, sustainable is kind of the question I'm asking. And if you listen to the statements by the PIF, by Amanda, by Dan Ashworth, by Eddie Howe, when they talk about this, there's a five to ten year plan to be challenging for trophies in five or six years' time for the Premier League. Um, they've got no specific targets. They, they want to make that absolutely clear. Um, if fans are saying we should be pushing for Europe, that's just something we're inventing in our own heads. <laughs> it's not something that Newcastle United yeah, are talking yeah. about. And Eddie Howe does that deliberately. I like his philosophy on the football. He's more concentrated on he's more concentrating on the detail about um, squeezing the maximum amount of output from each individual player and collectively by drilling them and drilling them and drilling them yeah. um, and uh, increasing their intensity and their fitness. Because if you make those small margins and you embed those small details that form into habits, then the, te the team's going to improve and start getting results. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go up the league anyway. So there's no specific target, but here we are, fourth. Yes. <laughs> um, do you think... Um, we're overachieving at the moment. Do you think this is sustainable that um, realistically we can finish in the top six this season? I mean, it, it's really tough to say. And, you, you know, you, I think if you look at my prediction at the start of the season, pr pretty much what I said was, it, I, w I wouldn't call it a freebie, but I think we did the impossible last season when we stayed up. Um, Eddie Howe wanted to do the basics right. He wanted to get the f squad to be as fit as it's ever been. So we talk as fans about, you know, we don't want a team who wins, we want a team who tries, we want a team who puts the effort in. Eddie Howe, day one, went right, we'll do exactly that. We'll find a team who will run twice as hard, twice as fast than anybody else will play. And if you're doing that, you're doing the simples right. And, and we've got that from day one. 
the next thing we did was we bought very well. You know, we haven't had a squad overhaul. We've had we've picked and we've decided, and you know, pretty much every player that we've brought in has has added. Uh, the fact that Bruno has gone on and been, you know, even better than I think I could have imagined. To be honest, you look at Sven Botman coming in. We spent you know months and months fighting to bring him in. We did it. These were all the building blocks of what we were going to hope to see how far we could go. My prediction at the start of the season was really, if we get top 10, I'm a happy man. If we can somehow steal a seventh place finish and grab a Europa League conference, I would be way over the moon. To be sat in fourth, it's, it's tough, because if, you, if you'd asked me the question before the season started, Rob, at this point uh, in the season, you'll be sat fourth, will that be overachieving? I would have said yeah, because we didn't actually know at that time how we would do. To now sit here and see how good the defence has been, how good Botman is, how good Pope's been, how good Bruno is. To, we've, we've played very well, we've earned it. In, in, in that respect, we've earned that position. We've not just got lucky in these games, we've won the games. So to say it's overachieving, at this moment in time, I would possibly say no. I completely agree, and of course we've had some uh, scandalous VAR decisions going against us. Yeah. We could have been maybe in third position by now. Uh, one of the things I want to touch on is uh, Eddie Howe is uh, on record. He's made it absolutely clear uh, he's not here to create a team that's going to try. He's all about winning. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he doesn't want to make friends. He doesn't want to be other um, supporters, our se their second team. He's going to win. Wants us to win at all costs, and that, if that means, like we've seen last night, and one or two other matches that we're going to time waste, and we do. Um, he's frustrate the other team, we're going to do that. If we're going to get some cynical fouls in, he's going to try any trick in the book and that's going to be unpopular with other yeah. teams, but he's all about winning. And I agree with you, Rob, that we're in fourth position by merit. We haven't achieved, in my opinion, so far. But do I think we can sustain that? I don't think so, and I hope I'm wrong. Of course, anything's possible in football. Look at Leicester, for example. But I don't think we'll have the resilience and the strength and depth to carry two or three injuries later on if, 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 if we've got some. I think if we're really lucky with injuries, I think realistically we could uh, look at a top six finish. But I, I worry about of our lack of resilience. What do you think? No, I, I agree. Um, that, that's the thing. It's, it's almost it's two different questions in a way. And I know we're looking at the sustain, sustainability of... Like, have we where we're sat in fourth right now at the time of recording, have we deserved where we are? Yes. Uh, will we be there at the end of the season? I would say probably not. And, and I would still run with my original prediction at the start of the season is if we grab your Europa League conference, that will be a good finish for us. And, and you've got to look at it you know, down the road as well. People are already talking you know, in the January. You know, we've got a couple of games until the World Cup. If we're still sitting in that kind of position, will the owners go, well, hang on, we're doing all right here, maybe better than we thought we had. Do we go and spend a little bit more? Because that's when you start looking further down the road. If we somehow did grab a Champions League spot, that's straight away very high calibre competition every midweek. Uh, and we're struggling to get a, a fit 11 players out at the minute, you know, with Maxi and Isaac not, uh, not fit at the moment. You know, thank God Almiron's come in and turned it on when he has. You know, we've been playing Murphy there, who in fairness to him has done a good job. But really what we want is, is that squad rotation. And, and without that, and all of a sudden, if we are able to clinch some sort of Europa League football next season it's it's putting more demands on a squad that it hasn't maybe got the players that it is so I'm already talking past this season you were just saying it for this season as well so uh, there's a lot to come but we're doing good I'm riding the wave and I'm enjoying what we're doing yeah of course you're right as well the the owners uh, in particular when Dan Ashworth was interviewed he kind of summed it up that this is a slow building process they want to get the right foundations in for the long-term sustainability of the club there is a risk even if even if we did get in a top six position dare i say a top four position do we really want that at the moment that would come with a huge cost next season to the resilience of the squad would they then be tempted to fork out a lot of money and buy a player and um, that might not be right for the club so there's inherent risks with that as well i'm concerned as well with the the type of supporter who will automatically Inst in instinctively raise the bar now we're in fourth we should be aiming for a top four in a course when we have bad results they'll feel disillusioned disappointment even angry sometimes yeah. and then boo the team when we do and beat uh, Crystal Palace at home what are your thoughts I mean 
football's football uh, and it's highs and lows you know we, we went through a fantastic I mean you know look last season it was <laughs> one of the most severe lows and big highs to be in, in the same season it was truly the definition of a season of two halves of how bad we were to you know as I said do the impossible first team ever to kind of do that and we're going into this season we went and got bottom we had a good pre-season but there was still always that feeling of even then can we keep this going like can we keep it going and and we'll have had a, you know, a few, well, I mean, results-wise, as you say, other than the Liverpool game. Um, but, you know, we have, we've had patches where we haven't been great. We've, we've, gr we've grinded out wins we've, or we've grinded out a result. Um, but to say that we will continue to, you know, keep pulling in the points the way we have done, I think would be a, would be a really big shout if, you, if, you, if you're that confident. I mean, that's why I say it's almost ride the wave, enjoy, enjoy the highs. You know, hope the lows don't last too long. I mean, we're, we're not going to go and we're not going to go the rest of the season without losing again. Um, and and you look at some of these teams who, you know, um, are really good sides, and, and we're going to have more tough games. I mean, Chelsea at home before we go to the World Cup. I mean, it's in my eyes, it's lining up for a, a fantastic game at St James's Park to go out on a high before we go on a break. But you know, really. They're, 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 a, they're more a team that's been up there for longer than we have. They've got some really good players and nobody walks in with their eyes closed thinking it's going to be an easy game. So, um, yeah, I think we're doing good. Just keep plugging away, as Eddie said. Try and add a little bit more in the January if we can and um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, most definitely. I think Dan Ashworth as well said... Um, They'll probably take three summer transfer windows to build the team that is going to be competing yeah. consistently uh, up there in the Champions League. And uh, like I say, one of you top six, move yourself along because we're coming through without a doubt. It might not happen in, you know, in the next couple of years. But we're, And how exciting it is to be a yeah. Newcastle fan. We're, we're, to have the manager of the calibre of Eddie Howe, he's, he's had his critics, I get comments on my videos, slating him. I, just, I don't know what the, those fans are seeing that I'm not seeing because yeah. this... The guy, I mean, he's just a footballing genius. He's a he's a he's a scholar of the game. He's yeah. he's constantly trying to learn. His his man management skills are second to none with the development and getting the best out of players. Just what an exciting time, man! Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's funny, I've just kind of popped it in my head there when you were talking about um, fans and, and expectations and all that kind of thing. I, I think the one thing for me, and I've said it a few times as well, is that. In a way, I don't really want to skip too many steps. You've, met, you've mentioned skipping the steps in the fact that if we suddenly find ourselves with that many games and not enough players, but also as a fan, I kind of want to enjoy the progress. You know, as I say, like, it is, and it's not going to happen. Wake up tomorrow, we've won the Premier League. You know, what, what do you do now? Try and win it again? Like, I want, to, I want to enjoy the ride of us going into the Europa League conference. How can we get on in there? Can we, can we get a decent run in there? I mean, we've not had a cup run in however many, long, however many years. Yeah. You know, even that is on my to-do list of, like, can we try and get to a semi-final or even a final at Wembley? You know, really, we're talking a lot about the league, but there's so much more. And, to... of course, if we do have a couple of decent cup runs, that's going to put us additional stress. Yeah on a limited squad and then all of a sudden we've got you know uh, if as I say if we can get some sort of Europa League football and then all of a sudden we're also competing, competing in it's like Man City have got like four games a week because they're in every cup competition they're in every one of this um, so it's 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 I was going to say baby steps it's not we're taking big strides in what we're doing right now but it is still something that we want to take our time with and as I say for me and enjoy every step of it. Don't, you know, wish for the for the finish. Yeah, and I think may I just end off uh, with uh, my my message to fans. Well, how I am, just just the way I'm wired up. I like to just undersell and overachieve. I like yeah. just like to hold back a little bit, and every, anything else is a bonus. So if if things aren't going our way, um, we're still going to have a a successful season. Oh, yeah. Get behind the team, you know. Try not to get too frustrated or angry if things aren't going our way, because just enjoy it because it's absolutely amazing Rob thanks very much let us know what you think in the comments below as regards to the sustainability of the club in the short to mid term I'd love to hear your views until next time oh and forget, don't forget I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to Rob's channel down in the, uh, in the description below cracking channel and uh, catch you next time